When you care enough to send the very best, go to Hallmark. Hey, cassettes, and welcome back to the Black welcome. Case Diaries. Welcome back, welcome back. Hey. Hey. Christmas. We're three old friends learning everything we can about movies and TV and hopefully teaching you in the process. I'm Robin. I'm Marcy. I'm Adam. Hey. What's up? Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to this <laughs> show. <laughs> yes. There are some films that go hand in hand with the holiday season. There are movies that we watch every year with our families because they remind us of our childhood and the spirit of Christmas. But in the past couple decades, a different kind of holiday movie has taken the season by storm. They're known for their cheesy lines, simplistic plot lines, and by the numbers predictability. Many fans claim to watch these made-for-TV movies as a guilty pleasure, while others have fully embraced their comforting tropes. We're talking, of course, about Hallmark Christmas movies. Oh, Ooh, man. Yes. Yay! These, these are the ones <laughs> that just bombard you <laughs> with Christmas spirit. <laughs> yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Christmas sets everywhere. It's Christmas, too yeah. much. <laughs> this is like the, <laughs> the most corporate Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is. At yeah. least it, it feels is. that way. Yeah. No, it is. It's like mm -hmm. it's like Hallmark is a Christmas machine. Yeah. yeah. And they just churn these things out. That yeah. makes they, yeah. Yep, with the whole, oh, Christmas, the true meaning of Christmas is <laughs> this. Yeah. While also being Christmas. like, buy your cards. But buy stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hallmark, not a sponsor. <laughs> you know the deal. He's a small town business owner of some kind, Christmas tree, coffee shop, bakery, and she's a successful woman from the city with a vague job title. Why don't we know what she does? Well, that's because it doesn't matter. She's going to quit the job by the end of the movie. <laughs> they were lovers once, or maybe she left him at the altar. And this Christmas, they may just find their way back to each other again. <laughs> each Christmas, these cookie cutter movie plots dominate social media because they are an easy target. But this got us wondering, when did it all start? Over the last 20 years or so, Hallmark essentially invented their own genre, which is honestly pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So today, we're getting a better look at the history of Hallmark Christmas movies and discussing the formula that has made them so successful. Mm -hmm. Yes, and allowed them to make thousands. <laughs> oh my God. What yeah. it feels like. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Greeting cards. Who needs them? Yeah, <laughs> anymore. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, so how do you guys feel about Christmas, Hallmark Christmas movies? Do you? I have maybe seen, <laughs> I mean, truly a fraction of what how many there are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's. I mean, oh, there's so many. They were at one point making at least forty Christmas movies a year. Yeah. That's an insane. Yeah. yeah. yeah yep. No, it's 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 it, wild. It really is. That's like what yeah. like slow down. <laughs> Put them in theaters. Like. No. No. That costs <laughs> yeah. money. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but I have a outside looking in perspective on most Hallmark movies. Yeah. There are there are a couple that I have seen. They've been on TV. Yeah. You know, like you know, sometimes you'll just have the TV on when you're doing other Christmassy things. Yeah. Yeah. That in that sense. So I I'm aware of how they usually go, <laughs> you know, and I yeah. can picture all of them, most of them. Yeah. But uh, I haven't seen very many, to be honest. Yeah. I haven't seen very many of, like, the new Hallmark Christmas movies. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Growing up, my mom would watch some of them. Mm -hmm. So I did see some of them when I was younger. Yeah. And a lot of the ones that I saw were Hallmark Hall of Fame movies. Yeah. And I just want to say there is a difference. Yes. Like the Hallmark Hall of Fame movies were always a little grittier. Yeah. They had like, oh. you know, you know what I mean? Yes. They were a little heavier with the plots. Yeah. And then. They were like Sarah Plain and Tall. Yeah. <laughs> and, Interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah. They were, yeah, they were definitely different. And then the, even like the Christmas, the, the Hall of Fame Christmas movies were yeah. a little heavier. And then. These ones that are produced by the Hallmark Channel and, you know, anything basically after 2015. Yeah. <laughs> it is very different. Uh, <laughs> they focus pretty much solely on the couples and the whole conflict is about whether or not they can be together. Like, that's yeah. pretty much the whole yeah. package. Thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The drama completely surrounds yeah. <laughs> that. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. I believe it. So I had to watch a lot of stuff for this episode because I didn't yeah. know a lot about Hallmark Christmas movies. Mm-hmm. And now I know probably too much. Oh, wow. (laughs) But I found this particular genre so fascinating. (laughs) You know, because Marcy was like, well, why don't we talk about Hallmark Christmas movies? And I was like, we we should. We should. I mean, they're so big. Yeah, it's so interesting. So I am am excited to talk about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've enjoyed a few over the years, you know. And some, some, I honestly don't know if they really were Hallmark. Because there's a lot of offshoot places that do similar movies so sometimes i'm like that might have been a christmas movie that i watched yeah five ten years ago i don't know (laughs) i'm gonna be honest i accidentally watched movies that were not hallmark movies we were doing this yep and i'm kind of mad yep because it was a waste (laughs) of time (laughs) but i mean see if the formula works exactly yeah yeah, everybody's doing it exactly you you don't know so really did you watch a Hallmark movie? I mean, yeah. Kind of. I did. But, you know. It just yeah. wasn't made by Hallmark. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, there's been a couple over the years that, I, you know, I enjoyed. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. So grab your favorite movie snack and cuddle up next to a roaring TV. It's time to talk about Hallmark Christmas movie. Oh, boy. Woo-hoo-hoo. Bing, bing. Chestnuts <laughs> roasting bing. on an open, open TV. TV. <laughs> 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 Jack Frost finding the remote. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the history of Hallmark as a company yeah. before we talk about the movies because we had to fatten up this episode somehow. <laughs> yep. What do you mean? <laughs> it's important to remember that Hallmark is first and foremost a greeting card company. So let's talk about how it got its start. In the early 1910s, Joyce Clyde Hall and his brother Raleigh created a business selling picture postcards. Over time, the endeavor snowballed into the most well-known card company in America. In 1928, the Hall brothers were the first to advertise their greeting card business nationally, adding the word Hallmark to the back of every card, since it was a term used by goldsmiths as a mark of quality. The company wouldn't officially change its name from Hall Brothers to Hallmark until 1954. Over the last 100 plus years, Hallmark molded the greeting card industry to what it is today, securing valuable licensing from companies like Walt Disney and expanding their sales to include ornaments and gifts. The Hall brothers are even credited with inventing modern gift wrap. What? Wow, really? Dang. That's yeah. cool. I guess I never knew that the term Hallmark was already a, a word used yeah. elsewhere. Yeah. Since they're the Hall brothers, I always thought that it was like, hall mark like this is their mm. mark yeah you know it's their like signature right it's right. The, yeah. the hallmark yeah but i guess it's both in a way <laughs> yeah because they... it, it's already a word for quality so. yeah yeah they liked the word hallmark because it meant quality and because it had their name in it yeah uh, that makes yep. sense. so that's why they were like we're going to use that that's uh, perfect yeah in an attempt to advertise to a bigger audience hallmark began sponsoring radio programs to great effect In 1951, television network NBC approached Hallmark with another advertising opportunity. They asked the card company to sponsor the first opera written specifically for television, A Mall and the Night Visitors. J.C. Hall agreed, hoping that the program would serve as a thank you to Hallmark customers for buying greeting cards that season. The broadcast was a huge success, and the company received thousands of letters and telegrams thanking them for sponsoring it. Thus began a series of specials known as Hallmark Television Playhouse and later the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Wow. It's so funny to me that they got letters. Yeah. As a greeting company, (laughs) people probably bought their greeting cards. Their, yeah, their stationery. And, and then mailed it to them <laughs> to thank them Aww. for the program. I think that is so funny. And they're like, oh, man, didn't you write this one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, Jim, look, it's one of yours. Uh, <laughs> ah. A Mall in the Night Visitors aired on December 24th, 1951, making it the first Hallmark Christmas movie. It was written by composer Giancarlo Minotti. Minotti was inspired to write an opera about a young boy and his encounter with the Magi, the three kings that visited Jesus on the night of his birth. The story follows a young shepherd boy named Amal, who likes to tell tall tales. One night, three wonderful and mysterious strangers arrive at the home where Amal and his mother live, asking if they could stay for the night. 
Amal is enamored by the men as they tell him they bear gifts for a miraculous infant. The opera became a regular holiday tradition, and theaters all over the world still perform it every Christmas season. Two years later, it made history as the first sponsored television event in color. Wow. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, so cool. Wow. Yeah. We've yeah. seen some history then. It's yeah. not just Hallmark history. Yeah. Exa- exactly. So we actually all three watched A Mall on the Night Visitors together. So mm-hmm. what, do you, what did you guys think of we this? We did. Hmm. <laughs> I, will sur- I will just say this out the gate. For me personally, operas are hard. Yeah. <laughs> because constant yeah. singing is distracting. Even if it was just dialogue, mm-hmm. it was still sung. Yeah. Yes, she, like, all of it. At the beginning, she's just telling him to come inside. It's getting late. But it was like, you know, still song the whole yeah. time. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay, I you have to get over right. that fast. Yeah. <laughs> In this age, I have gotten used to subtitles. and Oh, my gosh. They yes. would have been so nice. <laughs> This did not have them no. because it's just kind of on YouTube. Yeah, so it was a little hard to follow at times. It's hard to watch just because it's lower quality. It's from 1951. Yeah. It's like really white. dark. Yeah, yeah, so it's a little hard to see some of the stuff that's going on. Yep. But it was a pretty good, I mean, yeah, it's only about an hour long. Yeah, yeah, nice and short. I like the beginning, you know, where the composer talked about it a little bit and kind yeah. of explained what's going on. Yeah. First of all, Merry Christmas to you all. I do hope you haven't sent your children to bed because actually this is an opera for children. And I don't want you to be like those awful parents who insist on playing with their children's toys. It, it was actually pretty cool because it was yeah. a nice introduce, yeah. uh, introduction and gave us his thoughts. And then he yeah. introduced some of the people who actually like wrote the music yeah. and, you know, helped with the filming and everything. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I liked how realistic the mom was. Mm-hmm. She was like, wait a oh, minute, uh-huh. my, my child's special, you know, like, exactly. about, yeah. you know, uh, maybe you've come to see him. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, we're, like, we're looking for a really miraculous child. <laughs> and she's like, well, what you, about my you child? You found him. You found him, right? He's right here. Can you give my kid the gold frankincense and myrrh? <laughs> Later on in the movie, after they come and they rest for a minute and they talk, they go out to kind of basically get the rest of the village to come yeah. to the house. Yeah. yeah. And they all bring gifts. I was like, I, this town <laughs> seems to have very little. Yeah. yeah. They're sleeping on hay. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yep. I'm sure the rest of the town isn't faring much better. No. And yet they still have feel obligated to give gifts to yeah. these kings. To the kings, yeah. yeah. Who have plenty. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a little strange. <laughs> but I will say that it did bring about like one of the coolest parts of the whole thing, which yeah. was their whole dance scene. Yes. When the they were performing cool. for the kings. And that was like no joke, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I really liked the dancing. Mm-hmm. Agreed. That was really cool. Yeah. I really liked watching this because it was, I don't know, it was like we have to watch the first one. Yeah. Right, right. It was pretty short, and it was also just like you felt like you really watched a piece of history. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also mm-hmm. it was really cool to have a baseline for what it, how right. it started. Yep. For the beginning of the Hallmark movies because yep. my lord, it has certainly <laughs> changed in the last 50, what? 60 years. Yeah, it's a yes. little different now. From the very beginning, Hallmark is like, yes, Christmas is about gift giving. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <gasps> Snap. All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about Hallmark Television Playhouse, the Hallmark Hall of Fame, and the Hallmark Channel. Like we said before, Amal and the Night Visitors started the television program now known as the Hallmark Hall of Fame. It promotes itself as the longest-running and most award-winning series on TV. It began as a weekly program, and by the mid-1950s, it morphed into a series of specials that would air several times a year. Yeah. It went from a weekly thing called the Hallmark Television Playhouse to the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Yes. Ah. Major networks like CBS and NBC would air special presentations of these movies, which tended to be literary adaptations and plays. Eventually, Hallmark began producing their own original movies to great success. 
The presentations often coincided with a holiday reminding viewers to buy greeting cards. <laughs> Do it. Hallmark would even produce their own commercials to play during the movie. Because of this, commercial breaks tended to be shorter for Hallmark presentations, which viewers enjoyed. Yeah. I remember, did you guys ever watch a Hallmark Hall of Fame presentation like when you were growing I'm up? I'm sure I did, yeah. <sighs> I don't know if I did It was not. a big deal. It would be like Sunday night, mm -hmm. yeah. and it would be like, tonight on CBS, <laughs> Yes. a special presentation from the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Right. And uh, so that it was almost like the channel was transported to Hallmark Land <laughs> for like two or three hours. You yeah. Know? And you would watch the movie and it would be Hallmark Hallmark movie, Hallmark commercials. Like the okay. whole thing was different. Yeah. And then you were back to like normal broadcasting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The two minute commercials were produced as short films with their own titles. They became famous for making viewers cry. And when Hallmark got its own channel, the commercials from the 80s and 90s influenced the channel's branding. And to be honest, I kind of wish that more channels would kind of do this. Like, all the ch all the commercials are related to our stuff, mm -hmm. so yep. we don't have to have super long commercial breaks. <laughs> yes. Yep. In 1991, Hallmark formed Crown Media, which changed its name to Hallmark Media in 2022. In 2001, it took over a religious network called Odyssey, and the Hallmark Channel was born. For almost 10 years, the channel showed a variety of family entertainment that included its Hall of Fame movies from the 1950s up until 2000s. According to a New Yorker article by Sarah Larson, published in 2019, it was Bill Abbott, the former CEO of Crown Media, that encouraged the network to lean into Christmas. In 2009, introduced its most famous programming, The Countdown to Christmas. Starting in 2011, the Hallmark Channel began showing Christmas movies 24 hours a day from late October until Christmas. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Talk about leaning into Christmas. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the strategy worked, with viewers turning on the channel to have on nonstop throughout the holiday season. Because of this, Hallmark is consistently one of the top viewed cable channels, often ranking number one with women between the ages of 25 and 54. Yeah. Every year, you know, the list of most watched cable networks, Hallmark is always in the top 10. Which is, it, it, it's yeah. so strange to me as somebody who watches very little of it. It's <laughs> like, really? Yeah. It's like, like the top. This is like, the top? Oh, I guess people really like these. Yeah. No wonder they keep doing them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> people know? really do. Yeah. All right, so the Hallmark timeline now. Let's talk about that. Like where everything falls, how it ha yeah. yeah, we're going to talk it's... about kind of just, you know, we watched these movies and what I did was I tried to watch a movie, a Hallmark movie from every <laughs> decade. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so that I kind of got a sense of how the movies were changing. Yeah. While it's easy to make fun of the Hallmark formula, there's no arguing with the results. The idea behind a Hallmark original isn't to give viewers something they haven't seen before, but instead the opposite. Still, we wondered how Hallmark went from producing one opera in 1951 to essentially churning out several versions of the same movie every year. So, we watched a whole bunch of Hallmark movies, you know, for research purposes. <laughs> <laughs> In the 1950s, most Hallmark presentations were adaptations of books and plays. Hamlet from 1953 was one of the most notable. Yeah. In the 1960s, Hallmark started producing more original content, starring film and TV stars from the time, like A Cry of Angels, which was a dramatization of composer George Handel's life. It starred names like Maureen O'Hara and Hermione Gringold. The film we, Robin, watched from yeah. the 1960s was The Littlest Angel, uh, which she told us all about. <laughs> I sure did. This is a musical about a little boy that dies and is introduced to heaven by a guardian angel, played by Fred Gwynn, a.k.a. Herman Munster. <laughs> the film also starred Cab Calloway. Wow, yeah. Lots of stars. This was the this was this 1960s movie that I could find, Yeah, so I watched it. And it was a lot of music, a lot of singing. Yeah. Many of the Hallmark films of the 1970s are available to watch on YouTube. 
1973 live action production of You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown is one of them. Yeah. Continuing the play musical tradition. Yeah. The Christmas movie that we watched was called Have I Got a Christmas for You. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The list of films from the 1970s also includes a lot of book and stage to screen adaptations, but the company continued to create their own original productions. The 70s was such a goofy time for Hallmark. Yeah. And I know that because a lot of the movies are on YouTube, so <laughs> you can watch them. They're all basically like an hour long. Yeah. And they're all pretty lighthearted, mm -hmm. which is nice. And, you know, because like 60s, it was like they were kind of pretty serious and then, you know, they get a little lighthearted in the 70s. We watched Have I Got a Christmas for You. Yeah, we did. And <laughs> this movie was so interesting. It, it was about a Jewish yeah. community who decides collectively yeah. to give all Christians Christmas off. Yeah. So they have like made a bunch of phone calls and done a bunch of organizing and they've got all these like, retired police officers and yep. doctors and nurses, nurses. Yeah. and they have them all work on Christmas so that the people who can never have Christmas off, you know, like doctors and firefighters, yep. you know, that way they could have that day. To spend yeah. Their wow. Yeah. And it's really, it, it's it's got a lot of funny points to it. It really does. Uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> it's definitely very 1970s. And that we yeah. watched that and we had a good time watching that one. It was good. I, Recommend. The title of it is very funny. It, yeah. It sounds like they're like making you have Christmas whether you want it or not. Yeah. Like it may as well be called, I'll show you Christmas. Uh, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, you know a lot of Hallmark movies, earlier ones I've noticed have at least one plot line with either an orphaned child mm -hmm. or a dying child. Usually, I've noticed a lot of that that pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this one had a child that was in the hospital on Christmas, and her parents aren't there. Mm -hmm. yeah. so this retired nurse is like the only Taking person care of her. Yeah. That, yeah, she has oh. on Christmas Eve and. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so, I know. Yeah. And these people are so nice. They don't just work Christmas Day. No, they're working Christmas Eve. Yeah, which I'm like, yep. bro. But it helps save a marriage, and it uh, does. <laughs> you know. Um, oh yes. Yep. It saves yeah. a marriage. It probably saves that little girl's life. Yeah, probably. The Hallmark movies of the 1980s tended to have a little more of a serious tone. Holidays were not the main focus of many of these films, which included classics like The Secret Garden, a film we grew up watching. I love that yeah, movie. I recognize the name of it. The Hallmark version of The Secret Garden is so good. We actually could not find a 1980s Christmas Hallmark movie. So if anyone listening knows of one, please send it our way. Cause, we yeah, we looked, looked. everywhere. We searched. <laughs> and you know, Both of, like, we just we did. We did. We found ones from the 1980s that have aired on the network, but none of them were originally sponsored or produced by Hallmark. Yeah, that was the problem. Gotcha. Yeah. As we went down the list, the 1990s was the first time that we started to see the formulas and tropes that would eventually lead us to the Hallmark movies today. Movies like A Season for Miracles and A Holiday to Remember seem to have the structure on which most ha modern Hallmark films are built. Each focused on a female lead, either arriving in a small town for the first time or returning home. Both had romantic interests that were in law enforcement. The men usually have some sort of interesting job or like a pillar, they're like a pillar of the community. Mm. And interestingly enough, both films seem to have heavier plot lines involving the welfare of children. In one film, the children's mother is incarcerated and they have been kidnapped by their well meaning but unemployed aunt. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um. Yes. Yeah. A season for miracles. We, Marcy and I watched that one. Yes. That one is really interesting. <laughs> uh, this is one of those with the trope of like angels are real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's not the big headline for this movie. No. <laughs> the big headline for this movie is that she has. So what happens is that she kidnaps her niece and nephew. Yep. Because child services is going to put them in foster care. Oh. And basically split them up. Yeah, and, and she's, she's like, like no, no, they need to be with me. So she takes them to this like diner and this angel is just at the diner. And this angel's like, hey, go visit this house. 
and they go visit the house and the house is big and empty and they squat there for a night. But then <sighs> yeah. everybody in town assumes that she's a long lost niece of the woman who used to live in that house <laughs> and that it was and, and it was just given yeah. to her. And that yeah, oh it's the, and that she's the rightful owner. And they're like we should offer you a job and we yeah. should turn on your utilities for you. And we should. And then everything is fine and everything's okay. But she's just kind of lying about who she is. Yep. Including to the man that she loves, who is the cop. Yep. Of course. Ugh. And then at the end, uh. they have this big like court case. Yep. Oh my goodness. Where it's like, are you guilty or this, not? Yeah. Basically. This whole like custody thing, go on a custody battle, whatever. Yeah. At the end. And then they win the court case and then he proposes on the spot. Yep. Uh, and she says movie. yes. Of course she does. I'll marry you as long as you don't get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. Here's the deed to a big house for free because <laughs> yep. we think you're the right person. Yep. yep. Wow. Exactly. Yep. That would well, be I mean, wonderful. the angel showed the cop basically fake Yeah, the documents. angel forged documents. <laughs> wow, dude. It was like, he... yeah, she's the owner. I mean, yeah. I was wondering, I was wondering like, I saw them. Is. Yeah. <laughs> is there, is there having anyone around that could help me out? I yeah, mean. Right? <laughs> Did the angel play baseball at all? <laughs> uh, no, surprisingly not in this nah, one. Not in this no. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yep. it's called A Season for Miracles, Adam. Okay. It's on, yep. it's on uh, Peacock if you want to yep. watch it. Maybe I will. You should. <laughs> It's delightful. <laughs> the Hallmark movies of the 2000s were very similar to those of the 90s, though over time the main story conflicts began to focus on the adults in the romantic relationship and less on children. Get those kids out of here. <laughs> <laughs> the stakes seemed to be lowered overall. There were still some movies with heavier themes, like Silver Bells in 2005, which was about a young boy that runs away to New York City and almost dies at the film's climax. Ooh. Oh, um... Yikes. That's not the Home Alone I remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we said before, the 2010s was the beginning of Countdown to Christmas, and this is where we really saw a shift in the film content. In the early 2010s, the movie still had some of the seriousness that remained in the films of the 90s and 2000s. But by 2015, Crown Media started its own production company, managing almost every aspect of production, including costumes, location, and casting. Here it is. Uh, this is where it shifted. Like it's, yeah. it was kind of like a gradual change, and you yep. and you could see it from the eighties to the nineties, and this is when it's becoming yeah. about more romance, and we're seeing, you know, we're kind of dropping off the more yep. heavier stuff. Yep, we're, they're not musicals anymore. There were a lot more musicals in like the sixties. Yeah, and now we're at a point in like like 2014, 2015. Okay, this is where it becomes. What we know it as today. In 2014, Hallmark premiered Christmas Under Wraps, which Bill Abbott, the CEO at the time, considered to be the turning point for the channel. The film was the essential blueprint for many to come. It had a star that brought on nostalgia, Candace Cameron Bure, a romantic plot, and of course, the real Santa Claus. I mean, Ooh. yeah. Wow. Real magic. Real magic. <laughs> so we've got some of the elements of the old movies, right? Real yep. magic. Mm -hmm. Yep. Some romance. But we kind of take away anything that gives you like anxiety. Uh, you know what I mean? Yep, yep. The big conflict is about romance. You never worry for yeah, a, right. even a second. Yeah, because nope. even if it didn't work out, it's like, well, they just. I yeah. Mean, back to the normal. <laughs> back yep. to the farm. Back, <laughs> back to the corporate CEO office, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if so, things don't so, work out. So there aren't really like very Big high stakes. stakes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All Mark movies today are designed to depict an idealized version of America. They're meant to feel like a metaphorical warm blanket, allowing viewers to relax and shut out the potentially stressful holiday season. Yeah. Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> they achieve this by appealing to the most audiences possible. The runtime averages 90 to 120 minutes long, so the characters don't overstay their welcome. There is very little, if any, sexual contact between characters, maybe some kissing near the end of the movie, and maybe after a pro proposal oh. as well. There are usually two love interests, one that is right and one that isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wrong isn't usually a bad guy. He's just isn't the right fit. Right. These stories don't really yeah. have villains in them. Yeah. No. Yeah. 
Choosing between them is often a large conflict in the story. Do you see what we mean by the lowered stakes? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everything would be fine no matter what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike the Hallmark Hall of Fame movies of the 80s, each Hallmark Channel original Christmas movie has a happy ending. Author and critic Doyle Green has said about Hallmark's particular brand of movie, the genre is thoroughly standardized to allow for mass production precisely and holiday season consumption because the Christmas films are not expected to supply something new, but quite the opposite. They are required to supply more of the same by trafficking in familiarity and nostalgia. Like a new set of ornaments to put on the Christmas tree every holiday season that can mix and match with the old ones because they are no different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. That is about, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it. <laughs> like the idea is we're not, tri people, you, you hear that complaint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, they're all the same. You know, yep. whatever. Yep. It's like, well, yeah, that's the point. They're yep. like supposed to be. Yep. Yeah. Like yes. that's adding another one to the tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I like that. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. And like you said before, you can watch them at any point, any of them in any yep. order. It doesn't matter. They're just, they're all going to make you feel the same. They're yep. all, yep. all going to put you in a specific Christmas mood. You know and, exactly what you're getting. Yeah. You know. Yep. It's like, it's like cut out cookies. Yeah, yep, for Christmas too. they're mm -hmm. all the same, yeah. but you know they shaped different. Yep, but, but they all taste yep. the same. Wait, they yep. taste the same. You know mm -hmm. where you're getting exactly. Just yeah. like they usually bake in the ones now. <laughs> you know, there's at least one <laughs> baking scene. There's always a baking scene. <laughs> yeah. With Hallmark having its own production company, each film has a standard look and feel. Almost every modern Hallmark Channel movie is filmed in 15 days. What the hell? That's yep. insane. Days? About two weeks or so. I guess if you got it down to a science, uh -huh. it doesn't take long. <laughs> yeah. Holy seriously. cow. Whew. The sets are actuals, meaning that they use existing locations instead of having to build sets on sound stages. Most of the shoots are done in Canada, where the tax credits make it more affordable. Yeah. Yeah. It's so much cheaper to film in Canada. No, yeah. no LA Christmas movies? Yeah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Filming takes place all year, even in summer, when they have to take precautions because of the heat. It's important to remember that Hallmark makes films for other holidays, too. There's a 4th of July Hallmark movie. What? They exist. You gotta be kidding yeah. me. <laughs> the studio uses foam to simulate snow. It melts within 15 minutes, which is better for production than shaved ice, which could melt much faster. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Their budget is often under $2 million. They make a lot of money from their advertisements. I'm sure yeah. they do. Oh my gosh. I mean, if they're going to put things that are geared towards the Christmas season and uh -huh. all that, like, of course. Between 2009 and 2021, they had made 300 Christmas movies, as well as some Hanukkah films. <laughs> yep. At some point, how do you not like as a writer? Yeah. How do you not go? Please, can we do something else? Can we? Can the guy be from the city? <laughs> I'm not feeling creatively challenged. Yeah. Like, <laughs> see, here's the thing though. Every once in a while, there's one with an interesting plot. Yes. Like for example, Christmas comes twice. Oh uh, yeah. Oh for goodness sake. In that one, yeah. she rides a magical merry-go-round. And goes back in time. Oh, so it's like it's like something wicked this way comes. Yeah, yes. only it's you know something jolly this way comes. <laughs> yeah, Dude. next one. There, there it is. You, go. you got it. Hallmark, write it down. <laughs> <laughs> I also enjoyed the makeover, which ah. has Julia Stiles in it. See, and uh, the guy actually gets a glow up. Uh -huh. Yeah, she's like this awesome. You know this person that wants to be a politician and so mm -hmm. she's trying to go for a position in office and mm -hmm. she can't get it because she's <laughs> you know a woman trying to go for a politician you know yeah. and all that kind of stuff so but it's that one was pretty interesting too <sighs> it, I just like after after 20 i'd be like i'm done yeah <laughs> yeah casting in hallmark movies is just as important as any other part of production when the studio began bringing in younger stars from recent popular TV shows, their viewership increased. Yeah, kind of at the very beginning of the Christmas countdown, countdown and Christmas. Yeah. Their viewership was mostly older ladies. Mm. 
And then they were like, let's let's cast Chad Michael Murray. Yeah. You know, let's, like, let's, let's, let's cast, you know, some, people yeah. from One Tree Young Hill. Blood. And, we're, and uh, then their viewership just, you know, <laughs> yeah. went up. Yeah, makes sense. They learned that they could draw people in by hiring actors with a certain amount of built-in nostalgia. Like Danica McKellar, who played Winnie Cooper on The Wonder Years. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so they do this thing where they're like, Candace Cameron. You were yeah. on Full yeah. House. You were on that sitcom. Uh-huh. It was Lots very of people, popular. Yeah. Now you're all grown up. Want to find a man on TV? And <laughs> she's like, yeah, sure. And then boom, the ratings. Yep. Candace Cameron Bure has acted in about 30 Hallmark productions, which was surpassed by Lacey Chabert. You might remember her better as Gretchen Wieners in Mean Girls. Or Eliza Thornberry in The Wild oh. Thornberries. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Now she's yeah. the queen of Christmas. And now, yeah. Oh, wow. She is. Traditionally, Hallmark has stuck to a formula. This formula tends to include straight white leads at the center of their stories. It was not until 2018 when Christina Milian and Jerrica Hinton made history as the first female black leads in their respective movies. Damn. Which were, yeah. 2018. 2018. I mean, thinking that it's been since the 50s that mm-hmm. they've been making movies. Uh, but the movies were Memories of Christmas and A Majestic Christmas. Sadly, that was only two of the 37 Christmas movies they made that year. For goodness sake. <laughs> I can't believe they make so many in a year. Yeah. <laughs> Insane. While Hallmark has made small improvements in their diversity, the proportion is still not great. In 2022, they had their first same-sex couple in The Holiday Sitter and their first film about Kwanzaa in Holiday Heritage. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah, 2022. I, I think if you can make 40 Christmas movies in a year, yeah, um, you could at least make 10, 15 yeah, exactly. about Hanukkah, yeah. 20 about Kwanzaa. You, I, exactly. I feel like you can do like that. You can add, yeah. It wouldn't be hard. Exactly. Couldn't we just kind of even them out? Yes, but Countdown to Holiday doesn't mm. sound as good. Oh. It, they simply just change it to something about holidays yeah then then it just fits under all of them yeah hallmark holidays hey done Cut. slap Friend. that on there and dang yeah. yeah there are so many tropes mm. <laughs> that several people have made hallmark movie bingo cards yeah it's that. really easy yeah. <laughs> yeah i feel like this is the reason to watch the movies yes is to make a bingo card yes yeah yeah and we are all familiar with how tropes work right? <laughs> yeah, yes yep yeah so we're gonna talk about just a few of them here main character goes home for christmas Usually the beginning of the story. Yep. Piece of cake. Why? The, yep. the main character goes home for Christmas. Uh, there's some certain reason why they don't want to go home for Christmas. Yep. yep. Get them They're out like, of their uh, comfort zone. Yes. They're like, I got so much work to do. Yeah. I can't leave. Yes, and it invariably leads to hometown hero as the love interest. Right, Aww. right. Classic. You weren't yeah. interested in the high school quarterback when you were in high Mm-mm. school, but now he's accessible because he owns yeah. a coffee shop. <laughs> He's he's nice now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and he's and he volunteers at the homeless shelter. And he next secretly door. had a crush on you, even though yeah. you were the nerd in high school. Exactly. Whoa. But now you don't have glasses. How progressive! <laughs> <laughs> you don't have glasses or braces. Oh man, <laughs> man, guys, we're writing a story right here. <laughs> Done. Dude. Done. Then we have dogs bring people together. I mean, yeah, don't they? They mm-hmm. just they, they sure do. They always do. <laughs> Single parents. Aw. Yeah. You know. That's a that's a very Disney thing to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, oh man, he's so hot. And then it's like he turns around, he's like feeding a baby, and it's like, oh my oh, god, he's even hotter. You know? like that. <laughs> yeah. He knows yeah. how to take care of children. You know? Oh yep. boy. Yep. Especially if you're like a 40 year old woman in a Hallmark movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, that shit is like <laughs> crap. Yeah, it like, is. Oh. <laughs> then we of course have snow on Christmas. Of Gotta course. have it. Piece of cake. Have to. Yeah. The, the, I've seen enough of these movies to know, like, there'll be moments where it's like, oh man, it's cold outside, but it's blah, blah, blah. We're in a sleigh ride or something. Mm-hmm. And then, oh my goodness, out of nowhere, it's begun to <laughs> it's snow. Yep. Yeah. It's like, 
Okay. Out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Then we have holiday competitions. <laughs> the best part. Yes. yes. Who can decorate their bay window the best? <laughs> <laughs> at, at, on the on the storefront the of the uh, <laughs> of the strip mall. Right. Who bakes the best cookies? <laughs> yes. Or that. Yeah. The fudge off. You know. Yeah. <laughs> fudge dudge. <laughs> what? Then we have. Small towns are better than big cities. Always, right? Mm, yep, yep. It's never come to the big city for Christmas and nope. find that you love it and and stay here. Mm-mm. It's always come to the small town. Everything yeah. you've ever wanted is here in the small yeah. town. Yeah, that you left. You never need to leave. Yeah. Yes. Corporate big wigs want to shut down something important. Yeah. yeah. Always. Usually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Park- they, <laughs> they need that plot of land for a new mall. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> a parking lot. Everyone, parking need, lot. everyone knows we need more malls. Yeah. I mean, that's true. I mean, that was probably <laughs> yeah. like a. That would be a 1990s. Right, film. right, right. But still, I mean. But yeah. <laughs> you moved the headstones, but you didn't move the bodies. <laughs> Santa is real slash angels are real. Mm, yes, yep. always be prepared. If you're going to watch these, <laughs> always be prepared for the real Santa. Yeah. <laughs> if yep. there's anyone who's even remotely mysterious, it's Santa. It's, it's Santa. Santa. <laughs> it's Santa. <laughs> and if it's a woman, it's an angel. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. it every there you time. Go. Every yep. time. Bam. Dude. Or Mrs. Claus. Or, I was going to yeah. say, here's your 301st movie. <laughs> uh, just make it Mrs. Claus. Yeah. And now Ooh. it's different. Oh. Oh. No. Family over career. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's like a big theme in a lot of these. Yeah, because they always, like you said at the very beginning of the episode, mm-hmm. they're always some kind of something important uh-huh. at yep. a big company that we don't know. Yeah. Yes, but it's like, but, or, and hear me out, Yeah, I could just marry the super hot guy from the small town uh, yeah. and have a family and literally never go back to my job. Yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. That's... Kind yep. of. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The big important job where I made lots and lots of money. <laughs> yep. And could afford to live in a penthouse. <laughs> yeah. In that, in that big city. Get rid of it. Gone. I chop down trees for a living now. <laughs> and the last one we have on our list here is the boyfriend is a prince. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Royalty. Royalty. Yeah. Royalty stuff is like explicitly later on. Yeah. None of that was happening in any of the older movies. No, that I it's yeah, definitely the past couple of years. Yeah, past couple of years has been a trend where mm-hmm. it's like, oh, he's a duke. Oh, Ooh. he's a prince. Yep. You need I guess you need a lot of money. Yeah. Mm. You, yeah. Owning a coffee shop isn't enough nowadays. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna cut it. <sighs> but th- there are a lot more tropes besides these. Yeah. Yeah. And Those are just some common ones. One that I love that isn't really in the movie itself, <laughs> yeah. but is still a Hallmark movie trope. It's the cover of the movie, <laughs> yeah. right? It's more of a design trope, I guess. Where they're the the two are together, the two main leads, mm-hmm. usually the man and woman, and they are like holding something together between the two of them. <laughs> could be it could be nothing. It could be a kid. It could be a dog. It could be a star. It could it be a cactus. Yeah. It doesn't matter could what it anything. is. Yeah. yeah. The woman has a red coat on. Yeah. And the man has a green coat on. Oh, Look man. Look it up. It's all of them. They're everywhere. all like that. And so many. And it's always the same shades yeah. of red and green, yeah. too. It's like a foresty green. It's a little yeah. darker. And then just a the brightest bright red. Wow. Christmas red you've ever yeah. seen. Yep. Yeah. After Hallmark's success, other networks eventually followed with their own copycat kinds of movies. Some of these are so similar that it can be pretty confusing what movies are actually Hallmark. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it kind of doesn't really matter. No. You know? Mm -hmm. But because it's like they're all kind of the same aesthetic and same. Yeah. But yeah, it can be difficult to tell the difference sometimes. Netflix has its own list of films that come to mind when we think of this particular brand of Christmas movie. For example, The Princess Switch, A Christmas Prince, and The Night spelled with a K, mm-hmm. before Christmas. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. All gems, truly. Mm-hmm. I've never watched those. <laughs> I've seen... Actually, I think I've seen all three. <laughs> Lifetime now has its own annual Christmas movie programming called It's a Wonderful Lifetime. Mm. Uh, yeah. That's kind of clever. I like yeah, that. That's cute. 
Great American Channel, which was co-founded by Bill Abbott, the former CEO of Crown Media, also has similar programming. He was the former CEO of Hallmark, and I'll explain why. Mm Mm-hmm. When Hallmark aired an ad for Zola, a wedding planning website that featured a lesbian couple, some viewers complained. Abbott, the CEO of the Hallmark Channel, pulled the ad from the air and did not restore it even after people at the network asked him to continue airing the commercial. Some inside sources have said that Abbott's mishandling of the controversy jumpstarted his removal as CEO. Mm. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So basically, yeah, uh, he was the CEO of Crown Media, which has now changed to Hallmark Media. Yeah. And yeah, he, uh, is, I think it was 2020 when this happened. I think so, too. And they it wasn't the that commercial long ago. And somebody complained and he yanked it and everybody was like, put it back. And he didn't. And they were like, okay, you know All what? Right. I think we need a new CEO. Yeah, I, I think, it's time. <laughs> I think it's time. I think maybe we should have someone who's a little more open-minded. Maybe yeah, up with the times. Some, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe putting out 40 Christmas movies a year all with yeah. white straight couples is probably um, not the move anymore. No, I think we maybe we should move past. <laughs> maybe that. yeah, things are changing. You see, you see a little bit of it already. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. All right, guys. So, any last thoughts before we wrap this up? Oh my Ooh. goodness, and Hallmark. We just, Man. Kind of just, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I think yeah. my biggest takeaway was that you know uh, they're not all the same, mm-hmm. even though there are a lot of them that are the same. They're not all the same. <laughs> You know, some of them are different. You know, if you look online and you search, like, best Hallmark movie, Hallmark Christmas movies, there are lists, and, and those movies are, like, the most mm-hmm. interesting ones. So, like, you yeah. can find them yeah. online and stuff. Also, I really miss the old Hallmark movies. Yeah. I watched yeah. those, and I liked them a lot. Mm-hmm. I liked the Hallmark Hall of Fame movies, and yeah. I, I love that tradition of, you know, them just kind of taking over a network. Yep. And you're just, and you know, uh, a few years ago, well, oh God, maybe 20 years ago <laughs> or so, Hallmark put out the musical version of A Christmas Carol with Kelsey Grammer in it. Oh, yes. And I love, I love that version. Yeah. I love it so much. And that was a Hallmark Christmas movie. Yeah. They put that out. That was a Hallmark Hall of Fame and Aww. you know it it premiered on CBS and we got to tape it off TV and it you know had the commercials and everything and i miss that a lot so i mean i see how hallmark is a part of the christmas tradition yeah, yeah. It, it, and it's actually really interesting to learn that it didn't start i mean i guess the very first one was christmasy in a way yeah, yeah. but like when they were just doing movies, they were just Hallmark movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or Hallmark sponsored movies. Yeah. Whether right. they made them or not. Yeah. But then it just slowly started to lean into Christmas more and more. And now it's nothing but. Yeah. At least it feels that way. It's yeah. just it's just a, such a strong focus on Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Because they have to make a bunch of content for each year now. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah. you know, because they do that big program. Right. And like before that, yeah. They kind of made movies about all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Lots of biopics, mm-hmm. plays, whatever. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they were doing that for a really long time. This, yeah. this what we know of as the quote unquote Hallmark Christmas yeah. movie is new. Yeah. This is a new thing. This is not, this has only been, this has only been around for like 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But it's, it's so much. Yeah. All at once that it feels like it's been around for longer than that. Yeah. yeah. And yep. it, it's, it's like I don't I, I don't I'm not surprised, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'm yeah. not surprised that they did it this way because yeah. based on their product, I mean, because they are still a business, they yeah. don't just yep. make movies, right? Exactly. The Hallmark is a company. Yeah. I mean Hallmark Media obviously doing the movies, but right. like they Christmas is the season for their stuff. Yeah. I mean, people probably buy birthday cards or Valentine's Day stuff, you know, year round. But like Christmas is the gift giving season. right? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's their jam. So, of course, they would lean into that super hard and it seems to be working for them. So why not? Right. I mean, it works. Yeah. You know, people can make fun of this all day long. Homework's not going to care. Nope. They're making money yep. and people yeah. like it. 
people yep. are happy. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, if it puts you in the Christmas mood, yep. then who's exactly. to judge? You Go know? for exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Man, I wish I had a Christmas uh, Hallmark card to read to oh, sum yeah. up the movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because the words just aren't quite coming to you me. Know, you know, and, and that's, <laughs> that was the whole point of Hallmark <laughs> it, is that they were like, you know what? Some people aren't good at expressing their feelings Mm -hmm. and they're not good at writing. And so we're going to do that for them. And this is going to help them communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was like the the mission statement. Yeah. You know, of Hallmark. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, so it's, it's so fascinating. All of it, how you go from postcards (laughs) to this, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a journey. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like what you said earlier. You said Hallmark is a Christmas machine. <laughs> and, yeah. And that is the truth of it. In all <laughs> facets of Christmas, they are yeah. doing it. Modern Hallmark Christmas movies have never promised to be good. They're just meant to be entertaining. For some fans, they're simply background noise during the holiday season. To others, they are a regular form of entertainment that gets them through the season. When we set out to make this episode, it was because we wanted to know how these TV programs evolved from operas and Shakespeare to predictable romances. It certainly took us on a journey that we found to be a little more interesting than the movies themselves. Yeah. Hey. (laughs) But if there is a takeaway, it's that not all Hallmark movies are the same. We found some Hall of Fame movies to be interesting, while some of them brought back that all-powerful nostalgia. And every once in a while, we'd find one that was just fun to watch. So we hope you enjoyed our investigation into the empire of Hallmark. Mm -hmm. We cared enough to do our very best. (laughs) (laughs) Get it? Hallmark slogan is when you care enough to send the very best. Yes. Just in case anybody did not know that. (laughs) Yep. And uh, here we go. (laughs) Check it out, guys. We got this. (laughs) And Lucy, that Lucy. is another case closed. Okay. Woo. Whew. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. We really appreciated it. Yeah. We hope you found us on YouTube. We've got episodes coming out on YouTube Heck now. Yeah, man. Yeah. And on all your favorite podcast players. Subscribe. We also, we're on Instagram. We've been doing reels lately. Yeah. It's been Check real fun. Ah. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> We'd like to thank our patrons, John, JD, Anthony, Shelly, Bob, and Jacob. And if you'd like to be a patron, patreon.com slash Blackcase Diaries. Yeah. Yes. Extended special episodes. Yes. yes. Every episode that we do, we do a special extended one for patrons to listen to. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you like listening to us ramble on and on or talk about SpongeBob or something that's completely unrelated to this episode. <laughs> there it there, is. That's there you where go. you go. Yeah. You that's go. what you listen to. Exactly. So thank you so much for listening and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. A wish that all our families can be together this Christmas.